A couple of months ago, I made a video calculating the number of combinations in a 2x2x2 two by two by two Rubik's Cube like this one over here. Now I'm going to make a video uh, about finding the number of com uh, combinations in a Megamix, which is a 12-sided puzzle like this one over here that you see. And first, uh, we need to know some things about the Megamix before finding the, the number of combinations. One of them is the number of corners. There are 20 corners in a Megamix, and what a corner is, is basically a three-sided piece like this one, this white, green, and red one. Oh, and another example would be this yellow, pink, and gray one. And there are 30 edges in a Megamix as well. An edge is basically a two-sided piece like this orange and purple one, or this blue and yellow one. So now that we know that there are 20 corners and 30 edges, we can get to solving, uh, we can get to calculating the number of combinations in a Megamix. So where do we start? We can start with the corners, and that's what this 20 factorial divided by 2 times 3 to the power of 19 is over here. Now just as a review, 20 factorial just means 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 all the way to times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Same thing for 30 factorial, but starting at 30 and going down to 1. Uh, those are what the factorial means. So what does this 20 factorial divided by 2 mean? That basically means that you can put the corners in any spots. So you have 20 choices to put the first corner in. So let's just say we put that corner here. Then after that, you have 19 choices to put the next corner because this corner is already filled up. So let's say you choose this one. Then you have 18 uh, choices to put the next corner in. Put that over here. 17, 16, 15, all the way to 5, 4, 3, 2, and then you finally have one, uh, only one spot to put the final corner in because every other spot is filled. The reason we divide by 2 over here is because you cannot have a Megaminx where two corners are swapped. I mean, obviously, if you take apart the Megaminx and put it together that way, then obviously, uh, yes, you will have a Megaminx like that. But if we're just solving it like this and we're not taking it apart at all, then you will never get a case in which two corners are swapped only and everything else is solved. Uh, those corners will have to be in the right spot if every other corner is in the right spot. So we divide by two here, which is basically saying once you have two corners remaining, they have to be in the correct spots. They cannot be in the incorrect spots. So, those, so that has to deal with uh, the corners. But there's also another part of the corners, which is how do we place the corners once it's in a certain spot? Take this white, green, and red piece, this white, green, and red corner piece, for example. It can be like this, but it can also be uh, twisted so that the white spot is to the right, the red spot's to the left, and the green spot is up. And it can also be twisted again so that the white spot is to the left, the uh, red spot is up, and the green spot is to the right. So it can basically have three different choices as to how it's twisted. It can be in this spot, this spot, and then another spot. So there are three choices, and then we multiply that for each corner minus one. So the reason we don't multiply three to the power of 20 over here is because going back to the uh, what we talked about last time, you cannot have a Megaminx in which every corner is solved except for one and that it's untwisted. It's in, the, in that it's twisted in the wrong place. So you can't have a Megaminx in which everything is solved except for this corner where it's just twisted uh, once like that. You can't have it like that. And so we basically say 3 to the power of 19, meaning once all once 19 of these corners is uh, put in a certain way, you have to have the last corner uh, twisted in a certain way for this cube, well, not cube, technically it's a puzzle, for for this uh, puzzle to be solvable. So we multiply by three to the power of 19. And so that uh, is how we deal with the corners. Now for the edges, it's pretty much the same story. Um, there are 30 edges, which is why we have 30 factorial over here. So again, we just put the, we can put the edges into 30 different spots, except for the last two. The, once you have two edges remaining, they have to be in the right places. You cannot have a Megaminx in which two of the edges are swapped and everything else is correct. Uh, once you have the last two edges, they have to be in their right spots. And then finally, this 2 to the power of 29 basically means, well, let's say you have an edge like this, this white and blue edge. 
uh, can it be like this where white's on top and blue is on the bottom or can it be swapped where blue is on top and white is on the bottom? So you have two choices for how to swap and for how to uh, twist an edge basically. And again, it's two to the power of 29 and not two to the power of 30 because once 29 of the edges are swapped correctly, the last edge has to be in the right, uh, uh, in the right orientation. You cannot have all of the edges solved correctly and one except for one of the edges where it's swapped incorrectly you cannot have a solvable mega minx like that like you can you will never come across a case in which a mega minx is like that unless you uh tore tore the mega minx apart and put it back together in that way so therefore we have this expression 20 factorial divided by 2 times 3 to the power of 19 times 30 factorial divided by 2 times 2 to the power of 29 and now, if you put this into your calculator, you will get an answer of 1.01 .01 times 10 to the power of 68 combinations, which is a lot of combinations. And I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, if you want to, if there's, there's actually a name for this 10 to the power of 68, you can uh, say this as 101 unvigantillion vigan tillion combinations which is a lot 10 to the power of 68 is a lot and to demonstrate how much that is you might remember that the number of combinations in a rubik's cube is around 43 tri uh not trillion 43 quintillion so if we take the number of combinations of a megaminx 1.01 .01 to the power of 68 and we divide that by the number of combinations in a normal 3 by 3 by 3 rubik's cube 43 quintillion, we get, believe it or not, 2.35 times 10 to the power of 48, which is insane. This is basically saying that there, there are 2.35 times 10 to the power of 48 times more combinations in a Megaminx than a Rubik's Cube. So therefore, we can say that there are 1.01 .01 times 10 to the power of 68 combinations in a Megaminx. And we are done.